Hello and welcome to this video brought to you by Louis Ad. My name is Manuel Okafo and in this tutorial we'll be going ahead to light the scene. This is an animation shot from a very short animation which I'm working on. Um, this is kind of like an animation shot to kind of test out the Pupa add-on. Um, kind of use the tool in a more production setting of a very large larger scale. So uh, like all the animations you see here are being generated by Pupa. And you can combine multiple animations you can have access to multiple animation the link will be in the description or you could check my previous videos you kind of see more on that more updates are coming on that but um, basically what i want to focus on this tutorial is kind of lighting um, an interior spaceship shot um, at least the technique which i went about um, to or the technique i used to achieve this so that's what we'll be kind of focusing on um, so let's see if we can fix this stuff here so all we could do is just reduce this number and that should fix it okay so basically i'll be showing the, my entire process for doing this so the way i want to go about this is i want to render this with cycles um, that means it's going to need more accurate lighting and it's gonna be of course longer than compared to ev and the reason i chose cycles is because for my previous shots i've already rendered it with cycles and I wanted to keep up the quality and uh, even those shots were not as complex as this um, I still wanted to be able to keep that same level of quality um, through the entire process so what I have currently is just like a textured scene with characters so we can preview it now by clicking on EV preview so this is like an EV preview with um, just let's use this the scene HDR so this is how it looks but we need to light this to at least look like an interior spaceship so i'm going to be showing you the technique so let's go ahead and start since we'll be using cycles we'll make sure our render engine is set to cycles okay and i'm going to also switch this editor to shader editor and then i can switch this to word so basically the way i'm going to build up the lighting is i'm going to start from environmental light and then um, especially for interior scenes um, you want to also go for um, artificial lights uh, which are basically the most important thing since this is an interior scene and the main source of lights will be coming from the art artificial lights being generated by the ship so if you're creating a room it's probably from the bulb but like from this it's probably going to be from all the school panels with light and everything and yeah so let's get started with the environmental lights um, EV allows you to check on the scene world and that's being generated from this environment texture so the basic way you set that up if we delete this is once you have it um, let's create a new world okay so we hit new and this is what you get um, then you can go to add texture environmental texture and then we can plug it in and now you can go ahead and locate and HDRI, um, there are a lot of free ones on the market, so you can get one. You can just Google free HDRI and you see so many options. HDRI Heaven is a very good option for you to check out free HDRIs. So you just want to pick out one and so you can try it. So once you do that, it's just going to load in and you can be able to see how it's looking. Let's see if it's responding okay so that's good so now what I want to do is to just use this HDR and kind of eyeball it um, but you can notice we don't have any control for the HDRI that's where the transform of the HDR comes into play so you can hit ctrl T okay and for you to be able to use this feature you need to enable the node wrangler so go to preference node Wrangler so this one here so this is what you want or you could even add this manually um, but it's a long process and we don't want to do that okay so once you have that um, now you can play with the Z rotation if we go outside we can see it happening in real time and you can see it work so um, even as inside the in, inside the ship now when we move this you can see we're not get we're getting to little we're getting little or no um, changes or effects if any so we could make sure this is set to word 
Let's try another HDR, all right? Let's try something red. But it's like we're not getting any interaction, that, which was kind of the main reason why I wanted to work with Psychos. Um, so let's switch to Psychos now and we can start seeing the interaction with the HDR, all right? So basically what we want from these, we don't want um, so much lighting. Um, we just want, um, just turn this on. So this is the roof. So basically what we want from this is just kind of like a soft base lighting um, from this particular HDRI. So that's what we'll try to get. Um, you can decide the color you want and you can also play with the position. Okay, so once you get a lighting that is good, and if you're happy with this kind of sudden lighting coming from the, the environment, okay, um, then we can go ahead and add our own artificial lights. But before we do that, there's a nice uh, trick to make your interior renders um, be faster and work great, especially when you're working with HDR, and that's called light portals. Light portals are um, just instruments that help speed up or allows Blender um, realize when there's an opening um, in an interior scene so we have two openings here we have one here and we have one opening here so um, the way you add the light spot out is just hit shift a or you could go to add add lights and we add in an area light so we want to scale this up and rotate um, rotate by 90 degrees we want to flip that okay so probably you want to scale it down to just match the opening something like this doesn't really have to be perfect just as long as it's indicated um, the, around the opening and then you can go to the light settings and click check on light spot out and you will see it turns off all the other parameters just the light portal is enabled now Okay, so we'll go ahead and duplicate this and rotate C 90 degrees. Okay, so we'll place this here too and scale it up. So this will allow the light to be more noise free and, and it will also have like a more faster render, especially with an interior scene. So let's go ahead and give this a test render. Um, so for the rendering, let's see, um, we're using cycles for the render samples. I'm using 150. I have the noise, the, the noise are turned on for the render. So I'm going to use optics and my GPU settings are let's, system. I'm using a GeForce, GeForce GTX 1650. Okay, so I have optics enabled, so it's much faster and importantly for the performance for the tiles i've set it to um, 256 by 256 this i've kind of tested it um, experimented with different values to see the one that worked best so i was happy with this and yeah so another setting that i'm going to check for is the light part so for my diffuse is just one glossy three um transparency eight transmission two volume zero and i'm not really looking for realistic volume so i don't i just i turn it to zero and for the max bounce i just set it to eight so that's just the settings for dimensions i'm using um the nine nineteen twenty by ten eighty full resolution so i'm just going to go ahead and render it's quite fast actually i'm working with blender 2.92 and there have been lots of improvements with rendering out objects so you you tend to get even faster load time when you hit render compared to previous versions and as you can see this is um, completely real time and it's quite fast so i'm just going to pause this and come back once it's done so it's done rendering just with the hdri lighting um so it, it came out with um one minute 40 48 seconds so that's quite manageable especially for an animation um just a personal animation project and we have about 350 frames to render um, actually it's probably going to take a night and a couple of more hours just to have that render so it's not going to be so long or 
it's not going to be so crazy okay so let's go ahead and do the lighting for the scene so the basic way I did the lighting I'm just gonna show you if I enable my lights so what I did was as you can see I already added the portal from my previous setting so let's leave that there uh, we can see the artificial lights which I added kind of representing some of this panel and artificial lighting so we have two area lights so practically the just the lighting settings for this is just using an area light and I want to apologize for the dog barking it's my neighbor's dog it's like really inconvenient you know, especially when I'm doing tutorial um, so we'll just work with that we're almost done so it's basically artificial adding area light kind of setting it in place and then I have I'll just remove the roof and I also have like a specific area lights which are meant to light the characters themselves so I kind of approximate it where they are going to be more visible in the camera and as you can see I have one area light kind of lighting this guy intentionally apart from the environment light and I have one here also illuminating this character and you see it all over the place so I just have the base lighting for the entire shot and then I have um, I just select one of this okay so I also have something like this yeah so that's just a basic lighting setup just using area light and it's usually hand handy for interior scenes it has more control over like the final look so it's, that's why I usually go with it so I mean it depends too if you have like a point a, a a bob lamp probably it's you it will give you a different effect but area light generally is is great for interior scenes yeah so this is um basically it will give it a test render now i'll just enable the roof and let's give it a test render we'll render a couple of shots so i'm just practically using the same settings um 150 we could increase this to 200 and the denoise that does a good job um handling it and before we go to do that let's you know what let's just give this a render and we'll talk about some composition compositing trick or my basic workflow for compositing a shot like this okay so it's done rendering took about um two minutes 33 seconds just to render it with 200 samples so that's pretty good uh, i'm going to render a couple of frames um, some more but before that let me show you some of my compositing trick or what how i usually bring my shots together with something like this so i usually want to have, i usually want to make sure that all the basic um things i need are being generated from the shot so i want most of the lighting should be gen generated from the shot i want most of the mood design should be generated for the shot because um when you generate most of the lighting from compositing especially with the color of, of compositing you tend to it, it tends to look so in your face and just artificial i find so i tend to do that mostly with lighting and just use um composition and use few notes and a few pr presets kind of um, boost it up even more um, so one way I usually boost up my image is using the um, AO, that's ambient occlusion. Um, I because I like um, grunge looking image, I like dirt look. Um, I like image with dirt, so I don't really like very clean looking render. So I usually use the ambient occlusion to kind of dirty it up some more. And this is it without, and this is it with ambient occlusion. And sometimes I even go further to like 1.6 to just even kind of create that contrast. And also one thing I forgot to show is my color management panel. So I have I'm using filmic and I'm using high contrast. So this is um, the one without high contrast. This is none, and this is with high contrast. So like I said, this is just like an artistic style. Um, you can try what satisfies your um, creativity. Okay, so once I have that, I will then add like a little color grading to kind of give it that more sci-fi look, just a bit. Um, 
so you can see the difference just tint it slightly with um, blue and next is I will add some glare so if you've never used this glare node you can add that with filter and add glare so I'm just using the fog glow set to medium for the threshold since I'm dealing with a very bright scene I set it to 150 so if you notice if I set this to 1 this becomes a whole mess um, so you want to set it to something very high so it takes a very um, high threshold to be able to get the bloom so it's something like this and you just get those little um, flickers of light which is which are really cool and then finally I add like a little sharpening node so it's not even very um, pronounced it's just just very subtle just to kind of bring out some more edges of the render and then I call it done so that's basically it um, let me just go ahead and render out some shots and then I will show you guys kind of the image rail okay so I'm done rendering out and I've kind of rendered out a couple of images so this is the first one it's quite look it looks nice and then we have this one and then we have this image the final shot so that's basically my process for this particular shot of course this might vary um, depending on the tax um, I need to share, um, accomplish so but I just wanted to like put this out for you guys maybe this will be helpful to one person um, that's then I'll be satisfied so thank you so much for watching this video if you're not subscribed yet please go ahead and subscribe so you can see more awesome content for me I'm just this is I'm trying to figure out um, like an, some innovative content or in innovative way to be able to put out content and I'm trying this kind of workflow where I'm sharing my sharing my workflow with the current project I'm working on um, we'll see how this performs and if I need to improve on this so thank you so much for watching this video bye bye for now stay safe and see you later